Blog Talk Radio. But I, I, but it's kind of like how I come to horror. 
I may not like it, but I have to acknowledge when it is good. And as I said at the top of this little rant, Mike Patton writes music for smart people, tr- people who truly love and understand and can appreciate complex music. Now, you've gone ahead and listened to this whole album, and you got to do a review for it for 401mania.com in the music zone, Robert. So before we get into this album, uh, Odd Fellows, which came out in January of 2013, which we're going to review for you tonight, just you know, go, let, let's talk a little bit about your review. What did you think of it overall? Well, I thought, honestly, I came into it thinking, I'm like, you know, I only got this because I have a friend, Gavin, who's obsessed with that, and I just wanted to rub this in my face. <laughs> the only reason, only reason I chose this out, that it was free, but uh, I thought, thought it was a good, album. it was a good album. It was solid. It was definitely different than I thought it'd be. I thought it'd be like Phantom Oz, where it'd just be ambient shit and scat vocals. <laughs> yeah. No, this really felt kind of like a, like a mix of Patton's usual like shtick of like unusual shtick and alternative. I think it kind of, I think it kind of kind of goes along with that. Like there's some songs that I really do like, and there's some other songs. Like apparently the songs I really like are like the stuff that's really derivative of the '90s. <laughs> and suddenly you woke up a Pearl Jam fan. Ugh, I would never want that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of had the same impression as you. I actually put off listening to this album until like a day or two ago. I think I listened to it once at work, and I was like, eh. I'm going to go back and listen to Hate Breed. I was happier doing doing that. <laughs> which, <laughs> And everybody listening to this podcast then clicks off. Um, but, yeah, it's true. I, I was much happier at work listening to Hate Breed than I was listening to uh, Mike Patton do the why, blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know, kind of stuff that he does. It's like and, a um, in a door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I can just imagine him in the studio and you know, a toddler just hits him in the nuts with a hammer. Um, <laughs> that's where his emo- that's where his amazing vocal range comes from. Yes, small children with like blunt objects. Exactly. Well, isn't that how it works? Isn't that how Def Leppard managed to record his um, uh, photograph? Oh well, yeah, I think he had the toddler. I think the toddler man hit the other symbol. <laughs> But um, so I put off listening to this album after one run, one run through, and I said, "Well, you know, I'm planning on doing a podcast about this, so I, I can't just like you know get a hold of Rob and be like, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing we're doing sticks now instead, you know, we're doing striper. Um, no, it doesn't. I can't do we'll that. Get Pat. We'll get Pat. <laughs> exactly, we'll get Pat. How you doing, Pat? But um, I, I listened to it yesterday, and I listened to it today, and I said, you know, I, I have to kind of get into that mindset of give it a chance and stop and stop assuming it's going to be one thing or only picking out the parts you don't like. Just give it a listen. And I sat back and I listened to what I was driving home today. And I was like, you know, if I, if I let go of some of my, my prejudices, I, there are some pretty rocking tunes on here. There are definitely a couple of tracks on here where if I didn't know that this was Tomahawk, I'd have thought it was Faith No More. And Faith No More wrote some pretty rocking tunes. I mean, oh yeah, th- th- that was not the ambient... Uh, avant-garde, post-modern uh, rock that Mike Patton is known for. Uh, for God's sakes, these are the people that wrote Epic. Yeah, you know, the, they always have on the one-hit wonder countdown. Right, exactly. But but that was the thing. If you, if you listen to Faith No More beyond um, the real thing, listen to um, the albums that came out after that, all the way till the band broke up initially, Faith No More always put out some really, really, you know, really fun hard rock tunes. They were not a heavy metal band per se. So, no, really. I so Tomahawk, I think, is actually, a, is actually a throwback, on this album at least. I know um, in previous Tomahawk albums they experimented with, like, Native American sounds or whatnot, but there's none of that to be found here. Um, this sounds to me, kind of, in my opinion, and, and minus the keyboard, mind you, but minus the keyboard... This to me, this Tomahawk Oddfellows album kind of picks up where Faith No More left off. What do you think about that, Robert? I'd say that's a fairly good, a good, good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think it's it's not quite quite where they left off. I feel like it's more. I think it feels feels less Faith No More and more just '90s, like just straight <laughs> alternative '90s alternative, which is not bad. Because 90s alternatives, not not bad, not bad, depending on how far you go. 
Yeah, and well, it definitely cast a wide net, and you know, there was some things that were hits, and there were some things that were misses. So Odd Fellows came out in uh, January of 2013. We're going to go ahead and play each track, all uh, 13 tracks for you tonight, and talk about each one in turn for the next hour or so. All right, so let's start off with uh, the title track. You know, we've, we've talked about this before. Some albums have to really start off and grab you, and I think this was why I initially was like, ugh, when I first heard this, I was not a huge fan of this title track, which is called Odd Fellows. You did almost. No, I wouldn't say you hated it, but I can see why. <laughs> Who are you, Jeff Harris? My God. <laughs> no. Oh, God. I do not want to be Jeff Harris. I respect you, Jeff Harris, but no. <laughs> I made one comment no. about the uh, about the Rosie, the Ronda Rousey, Liz Carmouche commercial. He says I was devastated. Oh, That's oh I love that. I, I love that. Yes, I saw that. And actually, <laughs> just just random side note, me and Pat are facing off in the facts of fiction this week. So I call yes, him uh, and I think they finally found a judge for you two. I was going to volunteer, but that you know that that's like trying to pick between who's my favorite child, and I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Uh, forget who I forget who they got, but anyways, yeah, uh, I, I didn't. Mean, <laughs> I didn't mean to make you sound like a negative Nancy Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate this. I just I don't feel like it grabs your attention, you know. Um, that's a slow brooding. It has an infectious beat to it. That I'll oh. give it that. Oh yeah, it totally but, belongs like in a Disney horror, in a Disney spooky tales movie. Yeah, I think there's like other songs on here. Like I like I said in my review that I could totally see this album could totally hit the top forty. I could see it. But songs like uh, the next one, yeah, I could totally see it. But songs like this, I think, really are more for the patent. Fat and faithful. It's kind yeah. of got a drone to it. That was my first thought. I said, I, you know, I, <laughs> this album gets much better. But <laughs> let me let me say, my initial reaction was, this song is very Mike Patton, and for me, that's not a good thing. Now, again, I glowed about hate breed, so maybe I'm not the man to judge. But uh, I, I I just felt like. Like, okay, I get Mike Patton. I can appreciate Mike Patton. I don't necessarily like everything that he does because I don't necessarily like slow and brooding and doomy and ambient and ambient and ambient and uh, avant-garde, you know. And this was like, da, 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 da. you know, again, I could just, I could see uh, Odd Fellows brought to you by Pixar. I, I just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's. Like there's actually like a good half this album is like that, which you know I think it's fine because it, it the songs fit well together. Mm-hmm. Like they have a nice stream to them, and if you're in the, like I guess you know if you're in the mood for that ambient like feel, I think this I think this album will work. This song is a pretty good example of what you're gonna get into. See that's I think that's the best thing for like you know one the first two tracks or like you know this is what you're getting into. You know, and that, and and it's funny you bring that up because let's move on to the next the next track. It's a stark contrast from Odd Fellows was a very stark contrast from actually their first single they put out from the album Odd Fellows, which is Stone Letter. Um, it came out, I believe, late last year, 2012, and they're like two different songs for two different albums. But it actually works well together. I I think that 
um, I think patent fans would be traditional patent fans would be very disappointed if this wasn't you know uh, vacuum cleaners plugged into distortion pedals and squirrels mew- mewing and you know Mike Patton um, yodeling that sort of thing. But you know, <laughs> but again, you have to sell this to you know other than like the twelve people who listen to Mike Patton stuff. So you know, so there's some good hard rock songs on here, and this is one of the better ones. This is Stone Letter. Well, I'm upset, cause I can check, like on the line, speaking free, like we used to be, for such a long time. beginning it was kind of funny like it just made me giggle like that dun, 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 you know that kind of like standard radio beat and then you have Mike Patton just Mike Patton Mike Patton Mike Patton Mike Patton you could just I, I I can't remember the guy's name he's he's one of the artists on the alternative records um music label uh Jello Biafra thing that he does and he just re- like he just writes songs where he just repeats the same thing over and over and over again <laughs> I can see somebody doing that with Mike Patton um, maybe I'll, do I'll bust out an accordion and I'll just say Mike Patton over and over again so that it's a single the kids will love it anyway well, have him yodel into a hooker's asshole <laughs> <laughs> anywho so, um, yeah, th- I, could, I feel like Stone Letter would be a very fun song to hear live you know, I feel like it, they would they would sound really great performing it. I I think there would be a lot of fun in listening to it. It's I think it's one of those songs that's really made to be performed in front of a live audience. You know, the the whispering into the singing, and, you know, and that kind of basic uh, hard rock uh, tone of the song. It's good stuff all around. Yeah, yeah. This is the song I looked at. I'm like, you know, if this were to get any like get big, this would be the song. It's really accessible. It's really fun. But it's still got has a little bit of patinism, like him like whispering, right into the, into the mic. Yeah, I mean that's something Patton. I don't know if he's exactly known for because I don't know Patton that well, but I know that's something he does. And he also writes seventy five minute albums that are one song. So. <laughs> yeah, he's like I said, the man uh, the man paints paints on his own canvas. That's for certain. Okay, he so- does not dull dull his colors for anyone else's canvas. <laughs> no, he does not, sir. Okay, so uh, track three kind of returns to the, the slower tempo songs. This is called I O U. <sighs> oh, God. Yeah, 
yeah, I can really see, imagine like Patton just like chaining up some like fifteen year old like lady of the night into a closet and singing that to her. Yeah, that um as I was listening to that I'm like, that's totally got like sociopath you know, like I could like, see, like if they ever make a video for IOU, if there's not one already, you know, they, they've got to do like Mike Patton, you know, like j- j- again, some like you like you said, someone like tied to a chair or something, and then like singing to her and her and you know, sort of a Mr. Plinkett uh, captive terrible plight. Oh God, Mr. Plinkett, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some people can't watch those reviews of him doing the first three movies just because of that voice. <laughs> <laughs> the voice isn't, the voice isn't what gets me. It's it's the it's the tortured female. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think uh, I think in the in the Titanic one, um, he's got one. He, he's captured a woman who's dressed up as one of the chicks from Avatar, and uh, you know, he's just like, oh, this is what you breathe on your planet, and you know, he's like shoving gas down her face. That's great. Yeah, the intro of this song. I don't, did you ever play Goldeneye for the N64? <sighs> I am um, um quick side note about that. I never played it, but I know but I worked in a program for kids and they played it all the time, but they had to play it on paintball mode because they were kids and they they were they were damaged yeah. kids in a group home and they weren't allowed to play violent games. So the way they got around that was paintball mode. Yeah, but yeah, like that beginning totally reminded me of Goldeneye. Like as I was a, when I was a kid I used to play it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> that right there. It was like the intro to some of the levels. <laughs> now, on a completely unrelated but semi but related note, you played first person shooters, you played violent video games, I'm guessing you've played Call of Duty. Have you ever shot up an elementary school, Robert? No, they've never caught me. <laughs> okay. I just needed to I just needed to vent that out. I was listening to somebody on the radio talk about how violent uh you know, violent uh, video games are partially to blame for Adam Lanza, oh, and I almost oh, want to rip cool. my radio and throw it out of the car. Uh, yeah, no. Like, what's actually funny, because, like, I don't play many violent... I got to play many violent video games that aren't GTA. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm playing Condemned Criminal Origins right now, which is, like, you all you have is a taser and whatever you can grab around you, and you're trying to uh, basically evade and kill serial, serial killers. <laughs> Bitch black. <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing that, and I've been listening. You know, we all know what I listen to. Yeah, I haven't shot up anybody. I'm a pretty friendly guy. <laughs> Fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> um, you might be one of them white hat guys as opposed to one of them black hat guys. <laughs> Track number four. Oh, that was gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And for more on what I was just talking about, here is track four, White Hats, Black Hats. Of, um, a lot of their peers 
was how driven by the base they were. Um, you know, they, 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 you know, they, Maynard plays the bass guitar like it's the lead guitar. And I found that the, that the most prominent instrument on Odd Fellows was the bass guitar. Did you pick that up too? Oh yeah, yeah. I've uh, actually apparently he's the I think he's the new guy in the band. If I, if that's what I read right. It was either him or the drummer. It's one of those two. Anyways, yeah, they're uh, like the drum and the bass like really sync well in this, and I and I really dig the uh, vibes that the bass is given to. But at the beginning of this, kind of reminded me of I'm gonna get crucified for saying this, but it kind of reminded me of something from like White Zombie. <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't mean that like you know, uh, insult. It's just kind of that uh, like the groovy. I'm not vibe laughing because that's given. insulting, and and I totally see where you're coming from. But all I can think about whenever somebody mentions white zombies, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> all I can think about is yeah. Damn it, Kevin! I like Pat and friend Kevin keeps texting me, so I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> now what? It, now Kevin is your friend who who is one of the believers in the Church of Mike Patton. What's he on about? Is, is is he listening to this? Is he saying? Is he having problems? Does he need to call in? If he calls in on Skype, it's free. What's the dilly? Yep. Yeah. It's him. <laughs> yeah, he's like he yeah, he's listening. He's like yeah, yeah Trevor 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 Dunn's the guy from uh from, uh, from uh, Mr. Bungle and Phantom Oz. Well, normally we don't take callers into uh, the 401 Music Review podcast, but if he can, you know, roll up enough uh, quarters and dimes to to call in, he's more than welcome to. You hear that, Kevin? You should call in. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, I, don't know, I really did dig the song. Like, it's definitely it's one of my more favorites on this album as well. Yeah, I um, probably got distracted there for a moment. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's it's. It's funny how they go up and down as far as tone on this thing, you know, whereas we talked about how the the, the uh, hate breed, the divinity of purpose, was kind of all one tone. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just one long breakdown, as we said. Um, this is more all over the place. Um, it's definitely an even split between sort of the more accessible rock tunes and the, you know, more uh, Mike Patton fan-friendly, uh, we'll call it artsy songs. Yeah, so here, but it fits. It fits. Oh, totally. To make it work. It's a nice peanut butter and jelly sandwich if I've ever seen one. And here is track five, A Thousand Eyes. You know, between doing this podcast and the paranormal activity ones, um, I'm not going to sleep for another month. Oh, that's great. You should go listen to some Sono. Go do that. Go listen to Sono. No, I want like, to sleep. I have work in um, the morning. Oh, well, you don't need sleep for work. Some people don't. Oddly people... enough, the inmates get very upset if I fall asleep to them when they're trying to tell me why they're suicidal or not suicidal. Well, I can kind of see. I'd be a little, uh, a little cranky if that happened too. <laughs> like even this guy who gets paid to listen to us won't even stay awake for it. Damn, I would not mean much. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing encourages suicide. Like I actually did that once when I was working in, um, not private practice, but when I was an individual therapist in a community mental health center, I started dozing off during one person belly aching and whining, <sighs> crying like a pansy. And she actually brought it up, like, in another therapy session. She was like, so, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. And I was like, why? I was like, well, for one thing, you're terrible. <laughs> like, well, yeah. <laughs> You're sleeping on me, you asshole. I was like, hey, be more interesting. That's why I do this job. Anyway, um, so, yeah, that's one of the more creepy songs. It's also, <sighs> see, this is this is what I mean by, there were songs I was just absolutely scared of in the sense that 
Like, I, I just wanted the song to go somewhere, and it didn't. <laughs> you know, it's just, I know some people will listen to that and go, ah, oh, what is it, stupid guy? What do you only like mainstream stuff? It's not that. It's I, I just this was my problem with Mr. Bungle, you know, years ago. All of my friends who were into Faith No More and Mike Patton swore by Mr. M- Mr. Bungle. Thought Mr. Bungle was the greatest thing ever. And I heard Mr. Bungle, and I was like, okay, this sounds like someone just shit into a microphone. That's what this sounds like to me. <laughs> Just, they just you know, they just walk around with a microphone capturing ambient sound, you know, squirrels running across a roof, uh, you know, tr- uh, garbage trucks pulling up to a house, and decided, okay, bass line, done song. I, I just, it drove me nuts. And that's well, my problem with a lot of these kinds of bands is, like, not that every, not much like movies, not that every song or every movie has to follow the same structure, but for God's sake, take me somewhere. Just don't dibble and devil around making strange noises and say, voila, lobster. <laughs> well, just as I was telling you earlier about that Slayer cover, mm-hmm. it has like, a, I think it was in the middle of a raining blood. They have dial tone in the middle of it as an instrument. <laughs> there's, a, there's a song by Typo Negative, which is literally just silence. Uh, and I think, I mean, like when Soulfly did it and called it a mo- or called it, I think nine eleven or a moment of silence or whatever. I I I got it, but come on, it's just it's not music. It's it's anti music. It's nothing. It's Don't fool Wayne. me. You wasted a track. It's Lil Wayne. It's Lil Wayne. <laughs> did you read yeah, that? Yeah, Lil uh, Wayne does in fact make you dumbener. Yeah, uh, did you read that thing from Sean's uh, column? Yeah, I was. Uh, that's actually an old study. I posted it on my Facebook page as well. I think he yeah, got it from me. Well, no, no, that wasn't that. The one where he's talking about he beat that pussy like it's Emmett too. <laughs> Yuck. Okay. Yeah, most people I mentioned that too. I was like, yeah, it's always stupid. Like, it's Emmett too. I'm like, did <laughs> 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 okay. you teach me anything? <laughs> uh, but, mo- yeah, mo- moving but, right along here. <laughs> So I, didn't, well, I didn't get to say anything else about the song. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna say that I really like. I did enjoy the beat. Well, I know you didn't exactly like the fact that it didn't go much. What it did give us, I liked. There we go. Now, why though? <laughs> what What is it about the What is it about this meandering ditty that you found so compelling? Well, it's not exactly. I don't know if I can exactly find it compelling. It's not like I'm just like you know the song right here. I can listen to this all day. No, it's just like what it gave us. I enjoyed it because it wasn't long. It was like two and a half minutes. Yeah, it didn't go far, but it was. It, it, it kind of settled. At least I kind of settled into it. I was like, okay, this is okay. Wouldn't listen to it again, but it was okay. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't like creepy music. Again, a lot of this. We I said this at the top of the podcast. A lot of this sounds like this could be, you know, music. I think. They, I think somebody needs to go out and write a movie hire uh, Kane from the WWE and feature this and feature songs from Tomahawk as like the soundtrack. Voila. Ooh, Casino Evil 2. Exactly. And more masturbation in a jar. Yeah. <laughs> a million buys. <laughs> <laughs> Seven snowflakes. Um, okay. Can, can, can we move on now? Okay. Yes, yeah, so now we can. You have my permission. Oh, fantastic. Here it is. Track number six. Rise Up Dirty Waters. Thank you. 
So this is an interesting song. It's got that long, you know, over a minute uh, beginning there, and then it starts to pick up, and it takes you on a bit of a story. Um, it's fine. I think uh, I think some patience and uh, some understanding. Uh, you can really enjoy that song, uh, but if you're just looking for something to shake your booty to, uh, do the Harlem Shake. Is, is that the new meme on the internet these days? <laughs> I kind of want to hit people who are doing that. It was so stupid. I don't even know what it is. I I was like I was like really late to the party on Gangnam Style, and I don't know what a Harlem <laughs> Shake is. Apparently, it's just like flailing your arms and legs around. That's all it is, literally, just. So act like you were having a seizure and hit by lightning. Yes. Oh. And you're mentally debilitated to start with. I don't understand how this stuff becomes popular on the internet. Are people on drugs? Yes. I just answered my own yeah, question. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I think that and that it's just so easy to do and that you can get attention because you can emulate it. Everybody falls in love with it, like Superman, that hoe. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're looking to do the, the if you're looking to do the big wiggle, the Harlem shake, the the, the, the Gangnam style, this is not going to be your song. You come to the wrong album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, you really. I don't know why you bought this in the first place. Um <laughs> You but if you're there. looking to kind of you know. sit back and listen to something over and over again, try to figure out what it's about, that was a good song. What do you think? Yeah, I I actually kind of enjoyed the beginning of it because I felt it kind of had a good groove to it, especially like the clapping and stuff. The little claps in the background had a little bit of a jazzy feel to it. Then, I, uh, then you know who Richard other. Cheese is, right? I've heard the name. Okay, so Richard Cheese does these like lounge covers of popular music. Um, that, you know, like, <sighs> yes, I've heard this guy. Yeah, he does like a lounge cover of Nookie and um, <laughs> Down with the Sickness. <laughs> have you ever heard the Pat Boone cover of Inner Sandman? Yes, I used to have the entire of Pat Boone um, in a Metal Mood album. It was the greatest thing ever recorded. But oh, um, it's just so cheesy, but it, it works because it's fun. Oh, it absolutely. Well, that's kind of what this reminded me of, oddly enough. It just reminded me of like Mike Patton, just kind of you know at the at the piano, he's doing lounge music, but he's like all creepy, and you know there's candles, and Toby's there at the club, and he's just you know fucking with people, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I could see it. Well, except Mike Patton would get excommunicated from the church, like uh, like Pat Boone almost did. <laughs> I don't think there's any church that accepts Mike Patton except his own. Of which he is the uh, the cardinal. He, no, he's the pope. He is the pope. He, he is, is not pope. just the cardinal. No, no, he he is Pope Patton the first. Indeed, and he will always be. And 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 when he goes, there will be no other popes. You know, the, the Church of Patton will just go away. Oh no, they will retire the position, <laughs> and then there will it will just be all cardinals. All right. Um, so let's move on. To, unless you have anything else to say about track six. Uh, nope. Nope, okay, let's move on to track seven. This is called The Quiet Few. Settle into a good groove on that one. On the other hand, it's still interesting. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah, I dig it. This is definitely this is a bass led song if I've ever heard one. I really, I really dug that. That and like actually, I found it to be pretty pretty groovy. You know, I, I felt like I can kind of just sit down and kind of just move along to it. It's got enough of a discernible beat to make it catchy and memorable, yet at the same time, it's got enough of that like you know, as you said, Mike Patton like you know kind of wackiness to to make it work. So this uh, Odd Fellows album was actually pretty well received. Received. Um, just uh, kind of reading through some of the uh, reviews for it. Metacritic gave it a 78 out of 100 based on 14 reviews. Uh, All Roe v. Jason um, Lehman Grover rated the album four stars out of five. Uh, a lot of people said uh, kind of the same things that we're talking about, um, where uh, it sounds it sounds at times very jam band. Um, there's a lot of, of blending of the odd experimentation with um, more uh, accessible rock sounds. So, I mean, I, I think we're all, we're, you and I are on point with the consensus view of this thing. I'm just kind of looking through uh, the ratings. All, all Rovi gave it uh, four stars out of five. The AV Club an A minus. Consequence of Sound three stars out of five. Um, Drowned in Sound looked like a billion stars. <laughs> all Over nine thousand. Yeah. Revolver gave it a four out of five, and Spin. Um, looks like seven out of ten. So, um, yeah, pretty good, pretty well received album by people who, like I said, really know and appreciate music. Yeah, that's, you, that's why Rolling Stone didn't cover it because I looked at their 2012 and rock and almost like wanted to slap them. <laughs> I don't think Rolling Stone's really interested in music, kind of like MTV now. Yeah, but unlike MTV, where we know it's not, Rolling Stone still claims to be like a music magazine. So fuck the buttholes. Then they're. <laughs> Then they're deluding themselves. <laughs> I've seen Rolling Stone. That's that. That is a that is a political agenda magazine for morons. This is bad. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go move on to track eight. This is called "I Can Almost See Them." <laughs> Sorry. Robinson, our nation throws its lonely eyes to you. Go, go, go to Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> Sorry, isn't that what that sounds like at the beginning? A little bit. Oh, and I got a text from Kevin and said he tried to, I think he tried to Skype call in here and it was like, oh, no answer. <laughs> oh. Huh. Yeah, and I, I, I never saw anything. Sorry, bud. Yeah, you, oh. may have to use, you may have to use a landline. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Normally, you can use Skype to call into a Block Talk radio show, but um, I don't see I, I don't see the normal information that I would see for Skype. Maybe they did away with it. Mm-hmm. Block Talk radio is kind of an asshole some days anyways. Indeed. Especially, <laughs> especially when you're talking about Spider-Man. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would have been a great podcast if you could have heard Jeff. Oh, yeah, because he, because once he was like, yeah, dude, I work for Marvel, I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, but it was like, yeah, dude, I work for Marvel. <laughs> anyway, so, um, all right, aside from the fact that that uh, sounds a little bit like, uh, you know, Mrs. Robinson <laughs> at the beginning there, um, another one of these kind of slow, creepy songs, a lot of the same stuff I've said from the earlier ones. I, uh, you know, it's kind of like what I said about the, the, the Hatebreed album, where like you get to the middle of it and it just kind of falls flat. You know, it's kind of the same thing, one right after another. And it, you know, like it starts out really good, and then we kind of bottom out for a while, and then we're back up again towards the end. And I know the next couple of songs, especially the, this next one, number nine, 
I really enjoyed. But yeah, these these songs kind of in the middle, I was like, eh, meh. Yeah, yeah. There's a bit of a there's a bit of a lull, but actually, I, I like this a little more than Hatebreed because while Hatebreed hit the same note, this at least gives you different notes as the lull. <laughs> like I didn't think it lulled that bad. Like, like this song was another one that was kind of just like oh, okay, okay. I, I get what this is doing, but it's not really hitting home. But I still liked it. Yeah, like, this is one of those on albums. I think like like with Hate, Hatebreed's one of those albums where you can pick any track and put it on and go punch something. Um, you know, or go run or whatever, or lift weights, and it's there's no connection to anything else. No, well, I wouldn't say this is the downward spiral in terms of these tracks tell a story one right after the other. This is one of those albums where I'm going to sound like a music douche here, so everyone please forgive me, but this is one of those ones where I think you have to not just listen to but experience. Really sit down and sort of digest and dissect it and do one listen over and over again where all you need to do with Hatebreed is have it on while you're doing something physical. Basically, Hatebreed, you don't really have to listen to. You just kind of got to know it's there and hear a few notes. Yeah. Hatebreed is what yeah, yeah. Hatebreed is what comes on when you're walking out to punch GSP in the mush. You you really can't do that with, with Tomahawk. Yeah, it'd be very, it'd be very interesting to hear that. And then they accidentally put on Mr. Robinson. <laughs> Tomahawk, you know Mike Patton. Mike Patton is like the Bjork of of hard rock and heavy metal. He's just just weird, and you know, and some some of the stuff sounds like music, and some of it doesn't. Um, and, and that's what you get with Odd Fellows. But it's, it's one of those things where you really have to sit down and and just listen to it over and over and over again to really get it. But if you only if you can pick out just one song, after I've gone ahead and said all that, if you can just pick out one song and say, okay, play me a song that sounds like music, okay, play me a song that you know that 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 can h- properly hold up the mantle of you know hard rock and heavy metal. It's one. This is definitely one of them. It's one of my favorite songs on the album, but didn't have much competition. This is <laughs> Southpaw. podcasts of mine, uh, especially on when we do the music ones, I always have the song turned up to a volume of 100, and then when you play it, it's all, like, garbled. So I was trying to play it at a lower volume this time so that when so that it would match uh, the volume of myself and Robert talking, and you wouldn't be like, okay, well, here's Mark, and he's talking, and then, rah, loud-ass music. And when you have to go back down and up and down, I'm trying to get it more even. Um, but what you didn't hear them saying there was something like songs called Southpaw, and it was kind of like you know, block with your left and lead with your right or something like that, which I liked a lot. Um, I just overall I liked the song. Um, I liked the drumming at the beginning of it. Uh, you know, another one that was heavy on the bass. Um, 
definitely very Mike Patton with the whispering and then the, and then the yelling and singing and back to the whispering again. Uh, all around good stuff. I could see people you know being into that one. I think if you had to pick a second radio song, that one's you know that one's fine. That one works. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I like the. I also like the drums. I like the bass. So like I had a real drive to it, but it also had that like kind of whispered section. But it like it worked. Like, that's the story of a lot of this album. Like, you know, there's these things that some people won't like, but I really felt that it worked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and continuing with the mixed martial arts theme of this album, um, we go from Southpaw to Choke Neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. We're, well, if we were going to go with uh, modern current events, it'd be Nick Diaz doesn't show up to, to interviews. Oh, that was all a bunch of Dana White's propaganda, but that's not what we're here to talk about right now. <laughs> I just saw it on the MMA zone. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Um, all right, so here it is, track ten. You're gonna get me talking about MMA, and we're gonna be here for another ten hours, and I and I want to wrap this up in an hour. So, all right, here okay, it is. We got ten minutes. All right, Lan, count down. Here it is. This is Choke Neck. Sensing a theme of this album, <laughs> which is weird because it's got that very unassuming cover to it. You know, like the, it just says "Odd Fellows" and the animals, or whatever. But um, yeah, I, as I'm listening to it, this just reminds me so much of the early, you know, Bungle. And um, you're more familiar with Phantomus, and frankly, I know I've heard Phantomus before, because um, I have a buddy of mine who I'm, re- I'm really upset he couldn't make this. Um, I hope he's doing okay out there. He's, he's had some hard times. But um, he he was a huge Mike Patton fan, loved everything that he did, and I you know and he, I'm I know I listen to Phantomus because he made me, so but I, I want to yeah. know from you because you're more familiar with them than I am. Um, no, not really, not that much. I was gonna say how how would you how would you relate this to the Phantomus stuff or the Bungle stuff? Because I feel like in certain ways um it's it definitely draws a lot from those earlier projects uh and like in some ways there's a departure but i feel like um he never really got away from that especially with with songs like that last one uh, yeah i've only listened to like one or two like phantom Oz things cuz kevin made me this is why we needed a patent fanboy here <laughs> <laughs> yeah we needed a patent fanboy but uh Judging by just what I've heard, I think that like that really ambient, like that ambient sound is something that is synonymous with like his other side projects. Like I'm not sure about Thieving Tom or there's any of his other stuff. So I know he's got like one project where he's singing like 60s Italian song, pop songs with an orchestra. Got him and Seth MacFarlane ought to get together and do an album. Oh god! So like in the middle of the song, it'll just cut to some random uh, other song. No, I mean. <laughs> Have you not heard Seth MacFarlane do like old um I think it's like fifties or lounge songs? He did a whole like special on uh Epics. Oh let's see. Yeah, you have to check that out. Yeah, it's like, like Seth MacFarlane sings like so- something along the lines of sing songs your grandparents made out to. Let's see, Gavin Kevin texted me and said what was it? It's com- it sounds like it's completely different from fa- different different from Phantom Oz, which I'm assuming is different. Let me see. Text me again. <laughs> Mondo Kane is the one I was thinking of, the Italian. 
<laughs> By the way, yeah. this is great radio. You're reading from texts. Yeah, well, it's me because I'll get like a ring in my ear, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, apparently it is def- totally different from Phantomos. I, I is, that's know. what I thought, but it definitely reminded me a lot of Bungle. All right. Um, Bungle. I've only heard one album. and like, I didn't even get halfway through it, but it was like I had to put my cat down. And then I yeah, I put my cat I'm down. I'm sure you your know. cat understood it better than you could. Well, oh, wait, I have another text. <laughs> I feel like, we're gonna, I, I feel like this podcast is going to not so much endear us to patent fans, but anger them. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, because we're two average schmoes. But <laughs> anyways, yeah, I put my cat down. So total emotional wreck. Went by the Goodwill, picked up this bungle album because I went earlier in the week and it was there. So I'm, like, on my way to go pick up breakfast and go, like, you know, try to drown my sorrows in shitty 80s music videos with my friends. <laughs> and, like, I'm listening to this album. And even through my grief, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? It was, uh, <laughs> I'm, was it I'm disco, sad, disco but I don't Velate. understand this. It was like Disco Velate or something like that, like a <laughs> really, really, really weird patent album. It's like even hard for like patent fans to embrace. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it when, and, and this, this happens with a lot of different like uh, like weird postmodern art, but, you know, where someone like will says, We'll try to explain it to you. And they're like, no, you don't understand. The horse poop means this. And and if you don't get it, well, you're just not a smart person. It's like, no, do you really enjoy looking at this? I mean, it's seriously. Like, in all seriousness, I want to see somebody, like, defend Piss Christ, for example. Like, how is looking – I actually explain that to people at work. I don't know. Are you, you're familiar with Piss Christ, right? No, I'm not. Okay. So in the Brooklyn Museum of Art, I believe it is, uh, and one of the exhibits was a crucifix dunk in a jar of urine. <laughs> That's trolling. <laughs> and this, and to someone's mind's eye, this was this was art. And and I have to ask, like, okay, I get your commentary on religion. Obviously, <laughs> you're not a fan. I get that you think this is art, and whatever, and maybe on some level this is supposed to be interesting. But like, how is, how does an objective person go look at a crucifix in a jar of urine and stare at that and and, and ask themselves questions? You know, and and how just really appreciative, and that's that's what you get to with a lot of with a lot of this music. It's like, okay, I get like this is supposed to be art, but still, if it's not even like fun for me to listen to, what what what's the point? Other than it indulges the artist. Well, the, well, the point is that you're supposed to be thinking about the art. That's how you appreciate the art because you're being made to think about it. <laughs> no, I want to murder it. You, you do. It, you want you want every day to be time to murder it. That's right. But, but Mike, Pat- Mike Patton doesn't murder anything. The only thing he's ever murdered is a modem. <laughs> and that was just to get his dying sounds for his new songs. Speaking of murdering things, this is track 11, Waratorium. About the same. I really, really enjoy. I really enjoyed the fact that it was just something different. I think that's a good thing about like the fact that there are a lot of tracks here, as well as a lot of different sounds. Yeah. Like if you want like a sound like this, like the song, a song that's kind of ambient, was it makes it more refreshing. 
it's kind of like back in the day like when I eating. used to make back in the day when I used to make mixes and you know it was like trying to find like one song off an album so you wouldn't have to like repeat songs or whatever and you wanted just an eclect like especially if I used to make mixes of all the stuff I stuff I had bought recently and I would try to do like best of everything this would be one of those songs where like okay this is far and away one of the best songs on here and really the only song I need to listen to you know for a mix that that, that would be kind of my approach to this I could see it. The thing is, it's kind of lose, make the album lose a little bit of its, what would you say, scope. But I could see it. Because I think that, I think those quiet songs really do add. They do add something. I mean, sure. I'm not saying this is some like magical grand scheme of a concept album, but it still has a little bit of a, a little bit of a concept of randomness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and as we come to a uh, conclusion here, we've got two more tracks left. This is uh, track 12, Baby Let's Play. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Another slow song. <laughs> I just God. can't. You're, you're robbing our listeners of slow, of slow wonder. Yeah. Not small wonder, but slow wonder. If you want to hear Baby Let's Play in its entirety, go on YouTube and listen to it to your heart's desire. I'm not saying it's a bad song. I just, it's 10 o'clock at night uh, here on the East Coast, and I can't do this anymore. So. <laughs> I don't think it was that bad. I mean, yeah, kind of, it's kind of, you know, another slow, ambient song, but it's like it's different. It's not like I'm listening to a whole album of someone farting and attention saying his music. No. No, you are not. This is track 13. This is Typhoon. sound to it, but like sort of like a punk rock bass thing going on. It was just kind of an odd mix of uh, of sounds there. Not bad, not by, by any stretch, but just a little odd to me. Odd fellows, yeah. if you were. Ha ha ha. Kind of reminded me of a uh, what? <laughs> it's an odd fellows, if you were. Ha ha ha. Oh, I was gonna make that pun. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, I actually liked. It. I thought this kind of had like a like a ghostly western vibe to it. Oh, it totally did. I definitely saw that there. So, all right, so that's Odd Fellows, Mike Patton's newest uh, release from the band Supergroup Tomahawk. Is it really a supergroup? I mean, I get it, supergroup yeah, with guys I mean, from I different bands, are. but, like, you know, a oh, supergroup is, like, superstars come to, you know, like John Cena, Ryback, and um, Sheamus. That's a supergroup. Uh, the Shield, not a supergroup. Get it? You know, this well, is not it's a super, super group. group. If you're a, if you're an indie fanboy, it's a super group. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's just <laughs> where you're coming from. Like I've never heard of like the guitarist, so I think he's from like, the Jesus Lizard. I'm like, what's a Jesus Lizard? I was gonna say, Dude. and who is and who besides like 40 year olds who listened to college rock back when they were in college heard of the fucking Jesus Lizard? I think Kevin has. <laughs> well, wonderful. Or, which, which, which Kevin texted me. Yeah, I tried to get in again. I hope they don't charge me twenty bucks. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, just remember, it's all Blog Talk Radio. It's all. Right, we'll have to hook up a tin can with some strengths if Kevin come on in a in a future date. But all right. So overall, um, I would say like again, Odd Fellows is one of those albums where. Um, you know, if you've got some time and you want to listen to interesting music, uh, smart people music, then <laughs> this is the album for you. Um, if you're just looking to murder it, then you might want to skip this one. Robert, your thoughts? Well, well yeah, I think that's kind of one of those things. Just by look at the album cover, you're like, I don't think we'll be murdering much this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not there's not much time to murder it. I think Oddfellows is a very nice. Uh, way to put it. Now that I think about it, like I didn't even think about that until you made that pun that I was going to make. 
<laughs> Isn't it an odd mix of music? Like, there's not many straightforward rock songs, but the ones that are straightforward really work. And while some people may not dig the, like, the kind of ambient sound of some of the songs, they also work. I mean, everything here works. I personally gave it an 8 out of 10. You know, you want to call it 4 out of 5, whatever you want to, you know, however you want to put it. It's a very solid, it's a very solid record. I wouldn't say it's anything amazing, but if you, like, really love this stuff, maybe this changed your life. I don't know. All right. And obviously, if you're a, a um, patron follower of the Church of Mike Patton, then um, I can't imagine why you wouldn't like this album. And if you are somebody who uh, prays at the altar of Mike Patton and you didn't like this album, uh, go ahead and leave us a comment wherever you may find this podcast, either on four, in the 401 Music Zone or on the Blog Talk Radio page itself. Uh, shoot me a line on Twitter at Mark Rattledge or uh, at, shoot it at Robert at, uh, at The Metal Coop. Um if you're friends with me on Facebook, you can, you know, talk to me there about it. I'm 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 in, and I'm being sincere about this. I'm curious to see if Mike Patton people like this album or is it that Mike Patton people like everything Mike Patton does, you know, if he shits on a ham sandwich, he, they'll love it, you know. I don't know. Um his shit his shit has so many different like aspects to it. Like he has the nuts and the cheese. <laughs> my my Patton gets people. very bodily involved in his music. <laughs> I think I think Kevin showed me once uh, what he he pissed I think he pissed on a security guard. Yeah, oh, he just probably. whipped it out. Yeah, he just whipped it out and so like started pissing on a security guard. I'm like, awesome. Well, that's yep. what you do when you're when you're a big fancy rock musician. All right. <laughs> so this has been the odd fe- when you're rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been the Odd Fellows Tomahawk review. Um, we do these podcasts every other week or so. So we are uh, on schedule to do another one on the 5th of March. And what I'd like to do on the 5th of March is a career retrospective of Clutch. Now, now, Robert, I'm going to talk to you about this because right. I think I may have messed this up. We may need to do something else on the 5th of March, do the career retrospective of Clutch on the 19th, and then do Earth Rocker on April 2nd because Earth Rocker – which is the late, the latest Clutch album doesn't come out until March 19th, and that's not going to give me any time at all to <laughs> get the music uploaded and um, have you know given the time to listen to so we can talk about it on the podcast. So I mm-hmm. think we're going to move everything up a week. Um, right. What do you uh, uh, What do you want to do next? Ooh, there, I mean, there's a lot of a uh, lot of options. Let's see, uh, Voivod, the new Voivod's really good. It's got a really progressive feel. There's a new bullet for my uh, Valentine out. There's there's that. We can also do that. Uh, let's see, Dark Throne. There's a new one. Uh, you listen to Manila Road. Ever heard of them? I'm, you're gonna pick. You're, I'm gonna you 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 know what my taste is. Obviously, you've done enough of these with me now. You see what I put up on my own Facebook page. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I've talked enough about my taste. I've picked the I've picked a couple here. I'm gonna go ahead, and this is gonna be uh, March 5th is Robert's choice. Oh, oh boy. I don't, I'm not quite sure what I'm saying. I'm not either Voivod or if, uh, I think maybe Voivod because uh, like you like prog metal, don't you? Sure. Well, then, yeah, okay. We can do Voivod. Uh, Target Earth. It's on Spotify. All right. Let's go on the old Spotify here and see if I can, and see if I can actually find it. Um, yes, sir. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and, and just uh, go like this. Uh, so on April 5th, sorry, March 5th, rather, March 5th, we are going to review the new Voivod album. Uh, on March 19th, we will do a career retrospective of the greatest band in the history of rock music, Clutch, in preparation for Clutch's new release, Earth Rocker, which we will review for your listening pleasure on April 2nd. Yeah, I got it now. Yeah, now I have, now I have an entire Clutch discography to listen to in the next two weeks. I've never, <laughs> ever listened to Clutch. Well, you, sir, are going to get your education on. Yes. You, get, yes. you need your nourishment of clutch. Oh, I will. And just just like I said last time we did this, we wish you clutch, and then when Megadeth's new album comes out, we need to do like a Megadeth, like something. I have, a, album. I have a story okay. about Megadeth and Slayer um, with regards to me comparing them to a mixed drink that, uh, well, I'll, I'll just say it. <laughs> I was trying to... 
I was trying to get my wife to go see Megadeth and Slayer when they were playing together, and you know, again, my ooh, there's a new Buck Cherry out. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for you to just hang up the phone. <laughs> no, no, I'm not that rude. <laughs> uh, are you sure you don't want to? Uh, are you sure you don't want to cover the new Buck Cherry? Huh? Uh, you know, I take a bullet from my Valentine over there. Actually, I've heard, I've not heard good things about that album. Like, yeah, I have it saved huge, on Spotify. I haven't listened to it yet. Like, he's a huge bullet, like, fanboy, and, like, he's always defended him. He goes, listen to this, and I listen to it, and I'm like, I don't like the vocals. I didn't like the vocals before. I don't like them any, any, even less. I like them even less. Um, so I was trying to convince <laughs> my wife, who is not a Slayer fan, obviously, to go see Slayer and Megadeth when they were playing together. It was like kind of an extension of the big four, that, um, when, you know, when it was Megadeth, Anthrax, Slayer, and Metallica. So there was like a big four minus Metallica, um, and I wanted to go. Ooh, with Anthrax. Anthrax. Yeah, Sorry. and um, and I was trying to explain to my wife that like she could handle Slayer because Megadeth would be there, and it's kind of like a mixed drink where Slayer is the liquor and Megadeth is, is the juice. You know, it's the mixer. Um, and I said this out loud to her and her friends who thought that was the funniest thing they'd ever heard, and we all just kept repeating, Megadeth is the mixer. So is Anthrax the side of cheese? Well, we weren't talking about Anthrax. It was just, it was very much focused on, on Megadeth and Slayer. But, you know, Slay, Slayer was the whiskey. Slayer was the vodka in the drink. And, you know, and, and Megadeth was, you know, the juice, the orange juice, the pineapple juice, the cranberry juice, the mixer, if you will, the sweet and sour mix. Sour mix, rather. Sweet and sour would be a sauce on Chinese food. Hey, delicious sauce. But yeah, in June, they're coming out, Megadeth's coming out with a new album. We should review it. <laughs> so just okay. like long-term plans, totally, yeah. No, yeah, well, I'm we, a can, Megadeth. we can do that. Now, we can't do it the week of June 8th, because, uh, um, or after June 8th, uh, because I will be in the Outer Banks, and I will be on a self-imposed internet um, vacation while I'm on uh-huh. an actual vacation with my family. But in and around that time, as long as I'm not in the Outer Banks, we will definitely be covering, we're doing a career retrospective of Megadeth. Yes. Megadeth. The mixer. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, boy, the Outer Banks. You'll be only be like seven hours away from me. <laughs> yeah, see? You should, come, you should come out. You can meet my family. It'll be fantastic. Look, nobody wants to hear any of this. Now, listen. Um, <laughs> I want it to be done by 10. We spent the last 15 minutes making plans for Nigel. Now listen. Um, So so we'll be back in uh, two weeks. Now, in a week uh, week from now, uh, Sean Comer and I and Robert Winfrey will come back um, and we will be tackling the uh, Paranormal Activities podcast. um, Oh, boy. Three and four. Because Sean apparently has to expel his own demon. Um, So that's going to be the 26th. Uh, again, Robert Cooper and I come back and do Voivod on the 5th, and I said uh, initially on the 12th, uh, on the 11th, but I, I should, should have been on the 12th. On the 12th of March, I have a special announcement. The Long Road to Ruin will be departing from its list of movie franchises it will not be talking about for a special debate. My friend Ooh. Tom, who's a lifelong friend of mine, uh, and I, both huge Star Wars fans, we are going to have a debate over which was the least terrible uh, Star Wars movie, Return of the Jedi or Revenge of the Sith. This is actually a debate we've had many times before, a debate that was initiated the night after Revenge of the Sith, after we left the movie theater. And we've been having, so we've been having it for that long. And for your listening pleasure, we will have that debate live on March 12th, moderated by Sean Comer, a special Long Road to Ruin. So that's oh, what we. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Huh? So I can't wait to hear that, Tam. Yeah, I'll <laughs> hell, I join in on that. I love Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's what I got going on. And then, of course, every Sunday night at 9 o'clock is the 401 Ground and Pound radio show. Uh, with myself, Jeff Harris, Pat Mullen, or sometimes Robert Winfrey, or anybody else from the MMA Zone who decides to ca- call in. So every Sunday night, 9 o'clock, we, uh, we review what's new in the world of MMA, right here, Blog Talk Radio. Uh, occasionally, I show up on the Casual Heroes podcast. Uh, I put, put 
did the last one about a week or so ago, which is up on the casualheroes.com, talking all things MMA. So you can check that out. Uh, this Thursday night, uh, which will be the day after tomorrow, uh, I'll be covering Bellator. And then Saturday night, bring your best in your brooms because it's a ball fight. Ronda Rousey, Liz Carmouche, the first ever women's mixed martial arts uh, main event in the UFC. Bantamweight title fight. It's going to be fantastic, and I'm going to be covering it for the site. And I think that's all the things I'm going to talk about right now. Of course, you can also check me out yelling and screaming about how the media sucks on uh, The Right Hook, which you can listen to uh, Thursday nights at 9 on uh, From the Right Radio if you're not a huge fan of Bellator. Or you could just turn down Bellator and listen to me and uh, Freak Boy, John Broad, again on From the Right Radio's The Right Hook while you're watching Bellator. And that's the best way to enjoy it, by listening to me, Mark Radlidge, the mandated reporter. I see. Well, let's see. For myself personally, now I will be watching Rousey versus Carmouche, you know, a fine lady versus a sister and a and a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that, huh? Yeah, I had to bring that joke up because I think we're uh, were you the one who said it? Somebody made that smart ass remark on the I uh, did. Super Secret Writers Forum. Yes, I, I did. I said, I said Ronda Rousey, she's a beauty, she's a beast. Watch out, she's dangerous. Liz Carmouche, she's somebody's sister and daughter. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about Liz Carmouche. I'm not excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and you've learned nothing about her through 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 that promotion. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I really haven't. But anyways, anyways, uh, self promotion bullshit. Let's see, you know, Twitter. My Twitter is at the Metal Coop. My email for all my shit like columns, podcasts is at is the Metal Coop at gmail dot com. You can write me. I love talking to people. Love talking to people who hate me. So or people that love me. So yeah, I have that. Let's see uh, stuff I do. Uh, the Hammer of Doom podcast is still on a bit of a hiatus because you know I'm in school. But you mean the Hammer of Doom column? Did I say podcast? You did. I'm sorry. Column. Yes, column comes out. Sunday, late Sunday, early Monday, I'll be doing one at the end of the month as a month interview thing. Yeah, it'll be fun and awesome, and I'll say nice things there. Oh, let's see, other thing, let's see, a podcast, another podcast that I do run is the Sentai Rider podcast. We talk all things Tokusatsu, but usually like Common Rider, Super Sentai, Power Rangers, what have you. Hopefully I'm going to be recording this after this because we need to do the first three episodes of Power Rangers Mega Force, and it didn't suck. Woot, woot. And hey. let's see, anything else? Yep, that is all for me. All right. We want to thank everybody for listening to our trip down uh, Mike Patton Lane, uh, enjoying the Odd Fellows review. For uh, the Metal Coop, Mr. Robert Cooper, I am the Mandator Reporter Mark Radledge, and this has been the 411 Music Zone album review. We'll be back in two weeks. Please check out our other projects. Until then, be well, be safe, and behave.